So a couple of days ago, Adobe released uh, this new function within its um, substance sampler suit or substance sampler software, which is the ability to use text prompts to artificially using AI generate images that we can then convert into materials and use within our 3D projects. It's exciting, it's scary, and today we're gonna put it to the test. So let's go. So this is Adobe Substance 3 Sampler Beta or beta, as we see in Spanish. And um, it has just like new stuff that we can utilize. And probably the most interesting thing is of course, the generative option to create textures, create materials from a text prompt. So let's go. So down here on the bottom left corner, it's actually behind my camera. Let me show you. There we go. It's this little icon right here that says generative beta. And we're just going to click there. I'm going to move this to the center so that we can see. And the way this works is you tell it what you want. So texture and then just go for it. So I am going to try something, let's say, very common. I'm going to go for medieval. It's called medieval damaged cobblestone, right? Cobblestone and we just hit generate and what's gonna happen is we're gonna get four prompts over here That are gonna try to match the text board or the input that I did here I've actually talked about substance sampler before we actually covered this in the substance painter course Where you can use an image that you take a picture of you take a photograph and it has it already has an AI thing that it can use to generate a material from that image so for instance like this one right here looks quite nice. Um, I like that there's a little bit of grass in there. I like that we got a lot of variation. And what you do is you literally just drag and drop and you're gonna get this box right here that tells you, hey, you can use this image to generate a material with AI power. So this is why I say that AI, I know it's scary. I know there's a lot of controversial things about it, but sometimes, especially for tools like this, it can be quite helpful. So we're just gonna wait for this thing to do the AI conversion. Should be finished fairly, fairly soon. Of course, depends on your system. And uh, this is what we get. So as you can see, I mean, this looks quite nice. I, I think it is doing a really good job in general. It definitely looks a little bit blurry in certain areas like like AI, right? AI just like takes a bunch of pixels and, and gets them together into something that looks like possible. But this one, in this case, I think looks quite, quite nice. And the cool thing is that if you combine this generative option to generate images with the AI to material or image to material, you get all of this. You get the normal map, the roughness, the metallic, the height, the ambient occlusion, everything. And all of these maps can be exported separately. I've actually done a video before on how to create some nice alphas for your ZBrush projects using this technology right here. But you can also use them for tileable textures. Now you can see here that the height map is like quite, quite nice. So we get a, a nice result right here. There's an option here. I can increase the, the quality by increasing the tessellation. And uh, as you can imagine this in a project, I'm actually going to be exporting one of these materials as soon as we finish to uh, Blender and do a quick test to see how it looks with a, with a render. But as you can see, this one looks quite, quite nice. The only thing that definitely needs a little bit more work is, for instance, the roughness, right? Like we're not really getting that sort of like difference on the grass and the rock and the dirt. Maybe in the future we're gonna get that. However, 3D Sampler allows you to do that. I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but it allows you to use layers and, and modify these values in such a way that you you modify the, the properties of each a specific or of each different element. Now uh, let's do let's really put this to the test and see like how good it can generate images. Let's try uh, something very specific. For instance, Mayan pyramid stones let's see what we get like i'm expecting to see this sort of like uh sand color stones that are going to give us an interesting look and then we're going to try to do some patterns because uh, i do believe that right now we can only do textures not patterns but hey we can try i've been using this tool or trying this tool for the last couple of days after it was announced and i've had some sort of like up and down results some of them have been really good some of them have not been really good for instance this one this one's not a good result and the reason why this is not a good result is because as you can see it's trying to gather information from again from like mayan images or mayan pyramids and stuff and and it's finding the pyramid shape right but it's not knowing how to like properly integrate it on the on like the tiling of the element that we need so in this case we would need to be a lot more specific on the type of like structure or the type of thing that we would like otherwise we're gonna get this thing that just looks very very ugly and very very odd which is again not bad though now let's try something like forest ground with clovers 
moth and well not moth uh clubbers dirt and some lilies i don't know something like that and let's see what we get now this thing right here it feels a lot like mid journey or like um what is it dally like all of this like just image generator things i don't think you can generate characters and stuff i i believe this like algorithm or whatever this this inter, in, uh, artificial intelligence is more prepared to do things like textures but yeah look this it's not bad it's a little bit big on the scale you can see some very big clubbers but this one right here doesn't look that bad now to reset this we need to delete all of these elements right here and then just again drag and drop one of the images that we want and hit import again now will this replace uh people who use substance designer or people who use um, other methods to create their materials i don't think so I don't think this is going to really replace those because as you can see, and, and this has always been the issue with uh, AI, it's it's good, but it's not super precise, right? So for instance, this clubbers right here, like the way they're bumping from the surface, it's really like, it's not ideal. It's not doing the best job ever to generate this sort of stuff. But if you, for instance, need something very simple, like for instance, let's just say concrete damaged wall, right? Instead of having to go online, getting a license of an image, doing the whole process yourself, if you're already paying for your license here instead of Substance Sampler, then I do feel like this is going to be a, a good, like, useful tool to generate textures that are not going to have any issue. Again, in this case, well, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, and, and at the same time, I'm kind of, like, doubting myself because I know technically AI doesn't have as much issue with with copyright, but again, we don't really know where the data sets are being used. So it's one of those like very gray areas right now, but we cannot deny that this is a interesting tool that might be used. We're gonna do one more. I wanna try and, and stylize. Let's see if it, if it does like stylize stuff um, like well. But let's do very, very, let's do very quickly this concrete texture right here and see how this works. Now, again, I know this is going to be controversial, or at least it, it generates a lot of conversation. So if you want to say something, please leave us in the comments down here, and, and we can have a civil discussion, of course, about what we think. So this one, as you can see, again, for some, like, rocks or stones, not bad. It's definitely a little bit damaged, and I can, again, I can kind of see, like, these are, like, art artifacts on the color information where everything's kind of, like, blurred out. It's not as... as um, as sharp, but still, it's giving us an, an inter interesting result, and um, and I I like it so far. Let's try stylized wood panels, cartoon. Well, let's we'll just keep it stylized. Oh, well, let's let's try hand painted. Let's see if we get something here and try to generate. This is one of those things that uh, again I know can be controversial because I I am completely sure that this hand painted thing that this thing might imagine or might get or generate is coming from some hand-painted stuff and i'm not sure if the people who painted those things gave permission to this data set for it to be able to be painted but look at that horrible horrible result right now so yeah i, I mean again i don't think this is gonna like change the whole industry it will give us like especially when you need to get out of a, of a tough situation or you need to do something very fast it might give you a nice result so let's try one last final thing let's try round cobblestone street or round cobblestone london street let's try that and see what we get and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you very quickly how to export this material because one of the things that i do like about this process right here is that these materials that we're generating are all tileable so they're automatically tileable and uh, you're you might see a little bit of a seam but it's not going to be as obvious and that uh, we can export the SBSR archive, which when brought into other places, we're going to be able to get a nice result. Look at this. This is I've been getting this result quite a bit where I ask for a specific tile of pattern like this one's right here. And it's giving me a sort of like top or three quarters view. So not really a top down view. Let's try that top down view. Let's see if that works or helps with the like effect that we're going for. Because otherwise, if we try to generate the texture from that image, it's just not going to work. So yeah, again, let me know here in the comments what you think about this little tool right here or this new tool that they're adding into Adobe. They presented their new Firefly stuff yesterday and um, I've mentioned this before. Unfortunately, okay, this one did like, it, it did a nice job here. I'm a little bit like concerned that it's, oh, I see what it did here. So I said round cobblestone and instead of giving me a round, like a sort of like circular rock, it's giving me this sort of like circle going around the whole thing. And unfortunately, this is not gonna tile nicely. We're gonna have some, horrible horrible elements so we're gonna try this just um how smooth let's call let's say smooth cobblestone london street so if we do smooth 
I'm hoping to get this sort of like rounder shapes, not like this harsh, blocky elements. And uh, again, it should be a little bit easier. So I was saying, um, AI is not going. It's not going. AI is not going anywhere. The tools are going to be available. People will have access to those tools. So I believe as an artist, one of the best things that you can do is just see what they're doing. Like see if the tools that you are seeing here are actually working for something. And if they are, see how you could maybe incorporate them in your workflow as long as you're not hurting anyone else, right? Uh, but yeah, be very mindful. And oh, this is a conversation I'm already like expecting a little bit of heat on the comments. But this is a conversation that has been happening for the past year or more. Um, and, and it will definitely disrupt the industry. Either in a good or a bad way, that remains to be seen. But it's going to happen. So let's very quickly again just convert this material to the, the AI, AI image effect. So I'm going to use this one. It's probably the... like. It's probably the one that looks the best or the closest to what I would expect. And uh, once we have this, I'm just going to export the SBSR archive into Blender and use it. Which, by the way, we also have Blender 4.1 to review. So, yeah, let's, uh, there we go. So, as you can see, this looks quite nice. This is just a very basic, traditional, sort of like cobblestone, um, cobblestone effect. So, let's go here to displacement. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to keep the displacement up, but I'm gonna just lower this a little bit right there. And one of the things that I can see is that, of course, the roughness is very, very rough, right? Remember that the wider it gets, the rougher it gets. I would like this to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna add a layer here, and I'm gonna add a another color replaced. Do we have a levels? Uh, let me see if we have a levels or something similar to that. I mean, we can try exposure as well. Let's try brightness and contrast. And here, the input channel that I'm going to be modifying is going to be the roughness. So I'm going to bring the, this down. There we go. So as you can see now, the cobblestone starts becoming a little bit shinier, right? Maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's increase the contrast. And there we go. So as you can see, that gives me just a little bit of a, of a little like shine there on the cobblestone. I, I still feel like it looks a little bit too... I would like to be just a little bit more wet. There we go. And this is the kind of stuff that you can always kind of like tweak around and modify um, even inside of Blender or Maya at render time to make sure that you get like something that, that you like. Might be a little bit too much. There we go. So once you're happy with this, you just go here to export and we're going to export as. Over here, material settings, you can see I'm exporting as an SBSR archive. Or if you want, you can export the textures. Blender does have a substance thing, a substance plugin, but I don't think it's going to be updated for 4.1. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to export this as um, as just target files. And uh, let me export this. Not there. Well, let's go to the desktop. I'm going to do it. Uh, let's do it here on the, rock, on the rook. There we go. This one's going to be called cobblestone. Cool. So let me open the Blender, set everything up. I'm not going to like dwell too much into that setup. I'm just going to show you how this looks in a render engine. So we're now here inside of uh, Blender. This is Blender 4.1. Uh, a new version came out. And it has some like really cool stuff. To be honest, it's not like that big of a release compared to 4.0, right? But still, like it got some interesting tools. And this is it. This is our cobblestone material. As you can see here, I'm using displacement map, of course, to see the whole thing. And in general, I'm not seeing too much of an issue. I do see a little bit of this like sort of like I don't know, pixel tessellation, which is really, really interesting. And I'm not sure if it's something that I connected wrong on my maps. I don't think so, to be honest. Like everything, unless I, did I forget to like set this to non-color? I don't know, everything is set. Yeah, everything is set up properly. So I'm not exactly sure why we're getting that pixelation. It could be that the, sorry, camera like there. It could be that the, it could be that the map that we're generating, it's just only a 2K map, so we might have a little bit of an issue. Or it could be this grainy stuff that we talked about. Remember that AI only mashes up pixels, so maybe that's like their very soft, subtle variation there. But as you can see, this is perfectly, perfectly fine. Like if we need a cobblestone floor for our assets, like this one works exactly as I would expect any cobblestone element to work. We can, of course, change things such as the intensity and the scale of this thing, like 0.0... .0 one is probably like a more normal amount, probably a little bit more like 0 0.025, let's go. 
So yeah, this is it, guys. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like, do you think this is a good technology? Do you think this is going to help us as texture artists or for us to texture specific things? And yeah, just try to keep it simple, okay? Now, remember that tomorrow we're going to have our portfolio review or our live stream. If you're watching this later on, then every Friday we usually have a live stream. So make sure to tune in. Make sure to like, share, follow, and support us by going into our Discord channel or checking our premium courses down here on the description. That's it, guys. New technology, new stuff. Hey. Let's see what the future holds. I'll see you back on the next one.